As she's quietly checking out the surf in Hout Bay, you might not guess that this elegant achiever is Megan Hess. She's an artist for France's most famous brand of handbags, one of the biggest names in Italian shoes and New York's most famed jeweler. Welcome to South Africa. It's your first time here. Do you have any expectations? I'm just blown away by, I think, discovering all the sites and the coastline. So I'm really excited. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Megan's work sees her travel the globe. One week, her art will feature in a luxury swimming pool in Dubai. The next, she'll have illustrations going up in homes from Paris to Manhattan. From Cape Town, she was headed on a book signing tour of her homeland. OK, so because we're in South Africa, people say that South Africans and Australians have so many similarities. But one of our biggest differences is the fact that we here in South Africa have 11 official languages. 11? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you how to say hi in at least four. OK. All right, cool. I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> All right. So first one we're going to do is, is Zulu. Zulu. Zulu? Uh, yeah. So in Zulu, so you say Saubona. Saubona? Yes. Hey. All right. <laughs> I'll never remember it. <laughs> I got it. OK, I think the easier one is closer. And to say hello, you say Molo. Molo. Or if it's a lot of people, you say Molweni. Molweni. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, um, Bedi is, you say, Dumelang. Dumelang? Yeah, yeah. Or Dumela. Dumela? Yeah. Oh. There you go. I'm just getting it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're doing well, okay. don't worry. Okay. And then Afrikaans, we say, Hwe da. Hwe da? Hwe. Hwe? Da. Hwe da? Da. Da. Oh. Yeah, Hwe da. <laughs> All right, so we're in Cape Town. We're driving down Chapman's Peak. It's, am I, I, it's incredible, the color of the water. <laughs> see, that makes me want to draw when yeah. I see like the water in those colors. Where do you get your inspiration from? I get most of my inspiration from being in situations like this, yeah. being somewhere that I've never been before and seeing incredible things. It just, in some way, seeing this scenery yeah. will inspire something that I end up drawing and I don't know what it is yet but because I think when you get out of your every day and you actually experience new things and see new things it just provokes a thought or an idea or something so travel it really is for me the biggest inspiration. And where did drawing come from? Drawing is just something that I've been doing for as long as I can remember. I can't actually remember not drawing. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things that to me feels like second nature. So yeah. I've really been doing it my whole life. I never thought I would end up doing it as a career. I'm, you know, so thankful that I am. But yeah, it's just that one thing I really enjoy. Just love it. And fashion, could we expect like a fashion line from you? anytime soon. I know how to draw fashion. Yeah. I don't uh, know how to make it. So, <laughs> you know, there's an enormous skill in obviously making it. And yeah. I know you understand that. And so it's something that I've collaborated before with designers yeah. on illustrating what the range would look like. Yeah. And then the technical side of actually making it. I don't have the skills to do that, but yeah. I would love to do more collaborations where I have a vision for what the pieces will look like yeah. because that seeing it actually come to life from a sketch to yeah. an actual garment is, yeah. is pretty amazing. Over pancakes at the Swan Cafe, we discovered her characteristic style can also be found in a range of silk scarves and cushions. Her background in graphic design was a good grounding for applying her work more broadly. We have been exploring Cape Town, but I hope you haven't forgotten how to say hi in one of our official languages. Sabona? Yeah, Sabona. So maybe you might get an opportunity to try it. This could be a disaster. Let's try it out now. Uh, Sabona? Uh, actually, madam, in Cape Town, we say Molo. Oh, <laughs> yes. Molo. Is it close? Okay. Do you want to give that a bash? Uh, yeah, let me try. Let me hear Well, you. my name actually is Kweka. So if you can say Molo Kweka. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. <laughs> OK, this is getting really difficult. <laughs> Mola Kweka. <laughs> OK, I was close. <laughs> Enjoy. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> You got your big break when the New York Times number one best-selling book, Sex and the City, called you up and asked you to illustrate their cover for them. What an achievement. Yeah, I mean, that really was my big break. And up until that moment, I was always illustrating, but I was very, 
very much trying to break into luxury fashion and I found it quite difficult. And when that one project came along, it was really the turning point for everything for me. It was finally working on a project that was something big, something exciting, and I think the momentum of just realizing that anything is possible was the thing that really led me to all the other work that I ended up doing today. Family has always been quite a big inspiration for your work, but how do you manage your personal life and your wonderful career? Well, honestly, a lot of the time it's it's a bit crazy. <laughs> it's certainly not easy, and I think, you know, I look at it like you can't have everything perfect all at once, so as long as my husband and my kids are happy and I've made my deadline and we're all kind of getting through everything, then we're doing really well. And I think, you know, it's, it's that support. I, I like the fact that my children are growing up seeing that I'm working on something that I'm really passionate about. And I look at them and I think, I hope one day you find something too that you put all your energy into and that you truly enjoy doing for a career. What brought this creative whirlwind to town was another line of hers, illustrating books. Only this was no commission for a fashion house, but a far more personal project. A children's story about a delightful character she's created. And Harmony was honoured to be her plus one for the South African launch. Megan, you look gorgeous. Thank you. How would you describe your personal style? I always find my own style tricky to describe, but I think I'm just more drawn to dresses and I guess quite a polished ladylike look. But um, I like to switch it up if I'm traveling somewhere really warm, I'll wear lots of color and pattern. And then if I'm in Paris or London, I'll probably wear something a bit more tailored that's black and white. So I do kind of shift depending on my mood and depending on where I'm traveling. What look are you going for today? Well, today I've got the launch of my first children's book, which is Clarice, the chicest mouse in Paris. And she's a very cute, tiny little mouse that wears a lot of pretty little dresses with frills. And so I felt like a pink outfit would suit her perfectly for today. Clarice is a mouse in fashion and you're also in fashion. So do you feel like some of the characters represent your own personality? Maybe she's a little bit like me. She's someone who loved fashion and wanted to find a way to get into it and wanted to find other friends that she connected with. So there probably are some similarities between the characters and myself. This release means that the Australian author and illustrator has now published six books, including one on the illustrated life of fashion icon Coco Chanel. Zahira Marty creates launches as evocative as the pages of Megan's books. Zahira, you're responsible for this beautiful event. What are some of the deco elements you use here? Well, when we approached the Cape Town event, we um, specifically wanted to bring in local elements that really showed off our country and our city. So for me, that was very obviously a protea. It's one of my favorite flowers. And I think the beauty of the colors match perfectly with Clara, so it was all a great fit. Megan's style is really classic and I love that she's so feminine. I love the dresses and the lace that she's always wearing so I relate very well to that. I'm also into style so I look up to her. She's really very inspirational. I absolutely love her illustrations. I love the, the pink and the black because it is so modern. And my daughter is called Amelie. She's got a, a French name, so I think she is really going to identify with this character. To a generation of women who read Sex and the City and who are now mothers, this book is a way to rediscover her work. A couple of years ago I was in Paris and I was sitting on my balcony and I looked across and I saw a tiny little mouse run across one of the rooftops and I remember thinking to myself, how chic to live in Paris even if you are just a tiny little mouse and that's where the beginnings of the story came from. What has the response been like? It's been amazing and I think what's so exciting about something like this is that, you know, essentially I work on this in quite solitude and you almost don't imagine that eventually it will be printed into a book and then to come, you know, all the way from Australia to South Africa and actually sit here today and meet other people that have enjoyed the book and have loved the character, that's, it's incredible. Megan, it's been incredible spending time with you, thank you. But I can't let you go without having you sign this for me. I would love <laughs> Do you to. mind? I would love to. <laughs> There's even creative fantasy in her book signings. And every Hess illustration is done with a tailor-made pen which Megan named Monty. Amazing.